this is the <coughs> excuse me homework help video for honors math three unit nine worksheet two and i'm going to start with question number five so we're looking to simplify so whenever we simplify we're always referencing the different identities that we're working with and so we have them at the top of our notes so we always try to do something with like our algebraic or a substitution um, and we usually use both of them and go back and forth between them. And it doesn't matter um, how you do the problem as long as you get to the simplified form. So we can start this a couple different ways. One way we have two fractions so we can get a common denominator to subtract them or we could try to do a substitution. So again it doesn't matter how you start as long as you do to get started. So I'm going to start with just using some of my reciprocal functions so that I know that cosecant theta, for example, is the same as 1 over sine. So then I'm going to replace that with 1 over sine. And then I'm going to also work with the cotangent reciprocal function. So cotangent is the same as 1 over tangent. So when I do my substitution, I'm going to replace cosecant theta with 1 over sine theta. And then that's still over sine. And then I'm going to replace cotangent with 1 over tangent theta, also still over tangent. So again, just because I do it this way doesn't mean you're going to do it that way. So there's lots of different ways to do these problems. And then from there I have my fractions. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by tangent of theta. And then over here I do the same thing. So I'm just trying to simplify the complex fraction. So when I do that, then these are going to cancel because sine divided by sine is 1. And then these will cancel because tangent divided by tangent is 1. So I'm left with 1 in the numerator and then sine squared in the denominator. And then 1 in the numerator and tangent squared in the denominator. Okay, again, so you might have done this problem different. doesn't mean that you're right or I'm right, right? We're just doing it differently. And then I know that I have a sine squared here, and I have a tangent squared here. So again, I can use an identity, or I can try to get a common denominator. So I'm still going to be working with the identities a little bit, because I know that tangent is sine over cosine, so I think that might be helpful with the fact that this is a sine squared. So then I'm going to use this quotient um, identity here, so I know tangent is the same as sine over cosine, so that's what I'm going to work with next. So all I did was replace tangent squared with sine squared over cosine squared. So I have a complex fraction again. So now I'm going to clear my denominator. So I'm going to multiply by cosine squared to the top and the bottom. And so here this will cancel. And then now I have a common denominator. And so because I have that common denominator, I'm going to go ahead and subtract. So I can subtract the top and then leave the denominator alone. And then I can keep going, right? So I can keep simplifying this. So I'm going to use the identity for 1. So I know that 1 is the same as sine squared plus cosine squared. And then I still have a minus cosine squared. And then from there, I can see that the cosine squareds reduce. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out. And so then I have sine squared divided by sine squared. 
which is just one. Okay, so now again, you might have seen it differently. You might have done something by getting a common denominator first. You know, however, as long as you get to that same simplified form as I have. Okay, let's take a look at another one. So I'm going to take a look at number uh, 19 as well. Okay, so for this one here, so again, you can start lots of different ways. So I'm going to start by rewriting tangent as sine over cosine. So that's one of the definitions. And then I'm going to rewrite cosine, or excuse me, secant as 1 over cosine. So like why did I do that? I really don't know. So I know that I could split my fraction, like make this be sine over 1 plus secant and tangent over 1 plus secant but I don't see how that's helpful. Um, I know I could replace one with sine squared plus cosine squared, but then it doesn't really combine or cancel with anything here. So then I thought, well, okay, I'll just use my reciprocal definition for secant and then my um, quotient definition for tangent. And so I thought, well, you know, I don't know what else. <laughs> and so now I have a complex fraction, so I'm gonna clear that. And I'm gonna clear it by multiplying the top and the bottom by cosine. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute that in. So when I multiply uh, to sine, it won't cancel. So I'll just have sine times cosine. But when I distribute here, it will cancel, leaving just a sine. And then in the denominator, I'm going to distribute. So I have cosine times 1. And then when I multiply here, cosine over cosine. So that would just be 1. And then now I have this fraction, so if I look, I see that this term and this term both have the same um, trig function. They both have a sine theta in it. So I'm going to go ahead and factor a sine theta out of the top. So when I divide sine theta out of here, I'm going to be left with cosine theta. And when I divide sine theta out of here, I'll be left with just 1. And then now I see that these both have the same factor, so those will cancel. And then I'm left with sine theta. Okay, and that's it for that video.